Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lulu Zhang, and my supervisor is Dr. O Zhao. I'm from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. It's a great honor for me to be here to share with you about my research. Uh, the topic of my presentation is flexor torsional buckling response of stainless steel angle um, columns. So this is the outline of my presentation. I will start with a general introduction and then followed by a testing and numerical modeling program and some design analysis. Finally, I will show you a new design proposal. So this figure shows the stress strain curves of stainless steel and carbon steel. So you, as you can see, stainless steel displays a nonlinear stress strain response with no clearly defined yield point, but a higher level of, uh, of strain hardening. Moreover, the angle sections I studied are made by press breaking. So there will be strong enhancements in the corner region. Angle sections have very simple cross-section shapes. So they have been widely applied in structural engineering, such as transmission towers. However, despite the simple cross-section geometries of angle sections, their buckling behavior can be rather complicated. The basic buckling modes include torsional buckling and flexor buckling about major axis and minor axis. For intermediate angle sections and angle section columns, uh, the typical feeder mode is flexor torsional buckling, which is the combination of torsional buckling and the flexor buckling about major axis. And this feeder mode is also the focus of my, of my current research. So we have conducted a testing program on two press brick stainless steel angle sections. And the testing program included uh, tensile coupon tests, measurements of initial geometric imperfections, and 16 fixed-ended column tests. These two figures show the setups for the flat and corner material tensile coupon tests. And the obtained stress strain curves are shown here. So as you can see, the material strength of the corner coupons are obviously higher than that of the flat coupons for press break sections. Then we measured the initial geometrical imperfections for the tested angle section specimens, including the initial torsional geometrical imperfection and initial global geometrical imperfections about the major and minor axis. This is the setup for the fixed ended column tests. An anchor device is placed at the specimen ends to prevent the end section from any deformations during the testing. Regarding the feeder modes, Clear flexure torsional buckling can be observed for all the tested angle section spacements. Moreover, for those longer angle section spacements, minor axis flexure can also be observed. So this indicates that the major axis flexure torsional buckling is always accompanied by minor axis flexure buckling, as shown in the last figure. This table reports the lateral deflections about the major axis and the minor axis and the torsional rotation at the specimen mid height when the feeder load was reached, also demonstrating the in interactive feeder mode. We have also conducted fixed-ended and pin-ended column tests on hot road stainless steel angle sections. And we also found that uh, the major axis flexor buckling, flexor torsional buckling is always uh, accompanied by minor axis flexor buckling. Then we conducted a numerical modeling program Numerical models were developed and uh, validated against the test results. And the validated numerical models were then used to perform parametric studies. Based on the test and FE data, the accuracy of the existing design methods were assessed. In the European code in the EC3, a single buckling curve is used to predict the fractal torsional buckling strength. However, for angle section columns with the same cross section size but different member lengths, they will have the similar elastic critical flexor torsional load, NCRFT value, and also similar lambda FT value. So similar strength predictions will be obtained for these angle section columns. In this figure, these FE data correspond to the same angle section size, but different member lengths. So the EC3 buckling curve underestimates the length dependence of the feeder load and results in very conservative and scattered strength predictions. We have also considered the DSM-based design method. In this method, the interaction between the flexor torsional buckling and the minor axis flexor buckling is considered through the first equation. In this equation, FNE is the 
minor axis fracture bucking stress. Moreover, the loss dependence of the failure load is also captured by changing the values of A and B in the first equation. So the first equation actually defines a series of fracture torsional stress curves. This figure shows the, the assessment results for the method. And we can see that the method can provide accurate strong predictions on average. However, we still notice that there are many unsafe results. This is because this method was originally developed for carbon steel angle sections. And the nonlinear material property of stain steel is not considered. So we have found the shortcomings in existing design methods. Next, we will propose a new design method. First, we need to derive a set of loss dependent flat torsional strength curves for stainless steel angle section columns, and then find a global strength curve. Finally, we need to consider the interactive failure mode. Step one, derivation of flat tor torsional strength curves. In this step, the stainless steel material, material property is considered, and the angle section column FE model is first to fill by pure flat torsional buckling. So the minor axis flexure along the column length is restrained. In this step, we consider 10 delta F, uh, delta F values. Th this parameter delta F is a measure of the loss dependence. So for each delta F value, by curve fitting to this data, we can get a flexure torsional strength curve. So finally, we can get the equations for the parameters A and B in terms of delta F. These three figures show the uh, newly proposed flexure torsional strength curves uh, with the FE data for different delta F values. So we can see that the, new, the newly proposed flexure torsional strength curve, the red line, agree very well with the FE data. Next, we need to find a new global strength curve to predict the minor axis flexure buckling strength for stainless steel angle section columns. Here we consider the three global strength curves including the EC3 global strength curve, the DSM global strength curve, and also a revised DSM global strength curve. This figure shows the comparisons of the three global strength curves with the FE data. And we can see that the revised DSM global strength curve, the red line, can provide accurate and also relatively safe minor axis factor buckling strength predictions for stainless steel angle section columns. Finally, we need to consider the interactive failure mode. We, we only need to replace the yield stress in the flexure torsional, uh, flexure torsional equation uh, proposed in step one by the design minor, minor axis flexure buckling stress determined in step two. So this means that we set the upper limit of the member resistance as the minor axis flexure buckling strength. This figure and this table show the assessment results for the new design proposal and the mean ratio of the test and FE failure load to the predicted strength is 1.1, and the COV is 0.06. So this indicates that our new design proposal can provide accurate, consistent, and also safe-sided strength predictions for stainless steel angle section columns failing by fracture torsional buckling. So here we come to the final conclusions. We have conducted a testing program to study the fracture torsional buckling behavior of stainless steel angle section columns. And we found that fracture torsional buckling is loss dependent and always accompanied by minor axis fracture buckling. And we assessed the existing design methods and highlighted the shortcomings. Finally, we proposed a new design method. And the new design method was shown to provide satisfactory strength predictions for stainless steel angle section columns. So, so that's basically everything what I want to share with you. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Lulu. Uh, very, very interesting presentation and a lot of uh, a lot of technical content, a really thorough to, to, to go through and um, very interesting to see. Uh, can I remind everybody, if you have uh, questions, please raise your hand or I'll post a short message in the chat uh, and then I can, can come to you. Uh, uh, so we've got a couple. Um, I'll go perhaps straight to Eleni as one of my fellow judges. So Eleni, if you'd like to unmute and ask. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, my question is regarding uh, the type of imperfections you investigated uh, and how did you uh, measure them? 
I think it was a bit, the site was a bit quick and I didn't uh, get it very clearly. So basically what methods uh, you use to measure this type of imperfection? Was it geometrical uh, imperfection, eccentricity of loading? And if you accounted uh, for this in your finite element model? Okay. Okay, thank you for your question. So basically for angle sections, there are three basic uh, bucking modes. So correspondingly, there are three basic imperfections, including the uh, initial torsional geometric imperfection and the two initial global geometric imperfections. So for the angle section specimen, we place it at a uh, uh, platform and then we used four LVDTs to measure the uh, uh, derivations. So, uh, so for the uh, for each leg, there are two LVDTs, LVDT1, LVDT2. And uh, for this leg, there are another two LVDTs, including LVDT3 and LVDT4. So by using the geometric imperfection, this uh, by using the geometric relationship, we can derive the three basic uh, initial geometric imperfection. Based on the four, uh, readings of the four LVDTs, we can derive the uh, initial imperfections based on the uh, geometric relationship. Okay, thank you. And I presume these were accounted in, in the uh, numerical model uh, as well. Actually, we, uh, we, we obtained the elastic bucking mode for each, um, for each, uh, we, we obtained the elastic bucking mode for each bucking mode. So we, um, uh, initially, we obtained three basic bucking modes, including the uh, fracture bucking about major axis, fracture bucking about the minor axis, and the flat, uh, and the you know, torsional bucking. So finally, we uh, get a combination of the three bucking modes, and then in, uh, in, input input the uh, imperfection. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lenny. Uh, next question. I, I think I'll go to uh, Mithila Chinta, another fellow judge question. Um, if you'd like to unmute yourself, Mithila. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, this is regarding the experimental program. Again, you had nice work. Um, so you mentioned that uh, pin pin joint or fixed joint. So can you justify, because I know in practice to get these perfect conditions are not easy. Um, can you justify, I mean, how do you say this joint is, for example, a pin joint or this joint is? Fix. Have you done any extra work to ju justify that? Um, yeah. So for uh, thank you for your question. So for fixed ended um, boundary condition, we place the angle spaceman at uh, at uh, the anchor device. So the intersection of the angle uh, angle spaceman is restrained. So there will be no uh, deformations for the intersection. But did you this measure, for example, did you measure the, for example, rotation at the end, or did you try something using a video method or something like that? Uh, we, we didn't. We we used some marking as at the uh, at the barrier at the at the end. So we, we didn't use laser laser or anything else. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. And then I think there's just time for 30 seconds for, for one more question. Actually, I was I was going to um, ask about uh, a question very similar to Michael has put in the chat about, you know, we know mild steel angles are used widely in transmission towers. And it's just, if you could tell us a bit more, Lula, about, um, you know, where a, where a stainless steel angle section used you know, as columns or elsewhere, you know, where's the big application for this research? Where is it going to, where do you see it's going to bring benefits? So the, the question really is where, where, do we where can we use stainless steel angles? Well, uh, because angle sections, uh, thank you for your question. Because angle sections have very simple cross section shapes, so they are widely used in uh, connections such as connections and uh, uh, bracing cords in frame structures. Thank you. I think it'd be interesting to see whether maybe in future this enables transmission towers to perhaps move, you know, take advantage of stainless steel, whereas traditionally they were they were more carbon steel. Um, and I think we've pretty much run out of time. That was my alarm going off in the background. Um, thank you, Lulu. Really uh, interesting um, presentation and some good questions, good discussion there.